Hey everyone, this is your local historian Steve Rossio with another Portage Herald Headliner News Report. And I am coming to you from a different wall in the house. We're trying all sorts of different things. I'm actually in the foyer of my home and uh, it's undergoing a little bit of restoration, hence the uh, uh, plastic wrap here and so forth and so on. Um, I also threw on my 1970s era sports jacket. This is one my dad wore when he was a coach at Portage Northern High School back in the 1970s. And I put this on today just because I'm to that point where uh, I have that COVID hair going. Um, I've never had my hair this long in my life and it's truly amazing kind of going back through the decades now, you know, I'm going to see how long I can actually get it. Hence the mustache and uh, beard thing. I figured if I'm going to do the 70s hairstyle, I might as well at least go with the 70s uh, facial hair as well. And I can tell you that the moment that the lockdown is lifted and we're able to go back out and do things, first thing I'm doing is I'm getting a haircut. <laughs> and my wife said, also the first thing I'm doing after the haircut is shaving off the beard, mustache, and uh, sideburns that I've got going here. So uh, we'll see how that all plays out. Um, I want to welcome you back. It's been a joy putting these together. Once again, I learned such great things every time I read these newspapers. Um, the classifieds are just marvelous. The, the hometown campiness of these newspapers is incredible. And I hope you enjoy these. We're going to keep doing them for as long as we can, as long as we've got the newspapers to do them, I guess. And, um, you know, I just, I want you to just enjoy this glimpse back to our history from, you know, now going on, what, 50, almost 60 plus years ago. So, uh, enjoy. I'm going to stop talking. We're going to get right to the news report. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Hello, everyone. This is your local historian, Steve Rossio, with the Portage Headliner News for mid May 1967. Topping today's news stories, Fire Chief Jake Main celebrated his 25th anniversary as Portage Fire Chief on Monday. Chief Main joined the force in May of 1941 as a charter member. Dick Smith, Charles Kramer, and George Adams, who are all still active in Portage, were also charter members, the chief said. The first Portage Township Fire Force was led by Chief Ernest Hall. Mr. Maine was his assistant and on May 1, 1942, was promoted to chief. Chief Maine said that there have been several changes during the quarter century he has served. He said, quote, Back in 1956, we worked 84 hours on and 84 hours off. This has gradually changed through union negotiations to 63 hours on and 63 hours off. This, of course, means more men to cover the same hours, end quote. The North Station was built in 1960 and the East Station in 1961. Each station has two fire trucks. Central has an additional emergency jeep and a civil defense vehicle. The present force is 12 full-time men and 31 volunteers. Well, everyone, another milestone in the history of Portage will be marked next month as the oldest business in town closes its doors and makes way for the advance of a national organization. At the corner of Westnage and Center, Wolber Shopping Center has stood through the years since 1916 as an institution recalling the old days of the general store, the friendly neighborhood grocer, the place where your good name gave unlimited credit. Henry W. and Robert H. Wolbers, father and son and partners in the organization at 106 East Center, announced the closing of the family concern to take place on June 30th. It's a long time from the old dirt lane leading to the front door to today's busy traffic congested corner. It's a long way too from crackers in the barrel, button shoes and bulk flour for sale underneath the gas lamps to the wide variety of merchandise offered today. Groceries, meats, paints, drugs, school supplies, soda fountain, cameras, tools, and greeting cards, to name a few. Many changes and tons of groceries have gone over the counter, and many a high school boy and girl has been trained in the fine arts of making change and counting stock behind the counters of Wolber's store to go on to bigger and better horizons in the business world. This was a store which offered a charge account on groceries, Bob Wolbers relates, way back in the salary growing days of Portage. Customers would charge from one year to the next or from crop to crop with no interest or carrying charges. It was a day when life was a little slower and progress did not advance quite so fast. It is progress that has made Wolbers decide to close and offer this corner to another concern. At present, a large national organization holds the option to purchase the entire corner, which includes the store, the small house to the east, and the Wolbers' home to the rear of the store. 
Part of the Wolbers operation will be transferred to their second store at Texas Corners, four miles west on center. This store is owned by Robert Wolbers and managed by Robert Welsh. The Texas store will continue to offer fresh meats, groceries, etc., although on a smaller scale than the main ported store. Mr. and Mrs. Henry Wolbers plan retirement, while Robert Wolbers' plans are indefinite. This past Saturday, summer finally arrived in Portage with the official opening of the Little League season. Here we see North Little League leaving the Southland Shopping Center for the annual parade down Southwest Nidge Avenue. It was open house Saturday at the old residence on Shaver Road that now houses the brand new city's police department. It wasn't a full house, but personnel available were ready and waiting to show interested citizens the various facets of police work. People don't like to visit the police department, said Chief Richard Wilder, even on open house day. But confidence in the Portage Police Department is becoming obvious in other ways. At least that's what gets the credit, according to Patrolman Don Smith, tour guide and records clerk, for the overwhelming rise in complaints from citizens during the past year. The number of complaints for the first quarter period totaled 69% more in 1967 than in 1966, and the percentage is expected to continue acceleration. Now, to take care of the complaints and violations, there are, of course, the usual things you expect to find in a police station. The things you grow used to from watching TV officers in action. The radios, the guns, the fingerprinting machines. There's an AR-15, which every officer is prepared to use when necessary. It can shoot tear gas bombs and smoke grenades. There's a resuscitation machine, which isn't as effective, says Patrolman Smith, as mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. There's a straitjacket, which is ominous in appearance and nearly impossible, said the guide, to get on a man when he's in bad enough condition to need it. And then there are files. Files and files and files of records. Closed cases, open cases, files by name of offender and files by type of offense. And there's a big stack of unsolved larcenies, which are worked on repeatedly when any officer has an available chance. A staff of 23, including 18 uniformed officers, the chief, a detective, a secretary, and a radio dispatcher, make up the entire department. They'd like more help, better facilities, and higher pay. But meanwhile, they continue to protect the city's citizens from law offenders, whether they are on the highway or in the backyard. Finally, some classified ads that are worth mentioning today. We have a 1964 Ford Thunderbird, one owner, excellent condition, only $2,100. The owner will finance with $600 down. How about a Jeep, excellent condition, four-wheel drive, custom steel cab, only $595 cash. Electrolux vacuum cleaner, large, powerful motor, plenty of suction, all attachments for cleaning carpets, drapes, hardwood floors, furniture, etc. Make just four easy payments of $5.80 a month. Will deliver for free home trial, no obligation. Call today. One 15-foot Kinwheel runabout, 60-horsepower Elgin motor and boat trailer, very good condition, only $700. Edwards Motor Sales, located at 1213 North Burdick, have asked us to mention a few vehicles. A 1963 Cadillac Eldorado convertible. This is Cadillac's finest automobile. Beautiful black finish with all-power equipment, only $23.95. How about a 1962 Buick convertible? Light tan, all-power, radio and heater, only $895. Now for you sports car enthusiasts, they have a 1962 Chevy Corvette, V8 automatic, black, new white top, new tires, very sharp, only $895. Finally, Dirk's Restaurant, home cooking to beat the band here at Dirk's. Our steaks and chops are the specialty of the house and will make your mouth water. Dirk's Restaurants, located at the Portage Plaza, the Southland Shopping Center, and Dirk's of Parchment. Well, everyone, this has been your local historian, Steve Rossio, with another edition of the Portage Headliner News for mid-May 1967. Have a great day. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the uh, report today. Um, I think the one thing that struck me the most in this one was, first of all, learning about the Portage Police Department because uh, a lot of people don't realize that it started out in a house. Uh, it was an old kind of Italianate home, probably built around 1900, 1890, somewhere in there. Uh, and it stood roughly where the police station is today. 
um, go figure. And then eventually the house was torn down and um, the new police station took its place. So learning about that, hearing the, you know, the open house reviews and, and that was kind of fun. Uh, learning about uh, the you know, fire chief, uh, you know, that's also an incredible story. Um, and then the classifieds, you know, come on, $850 for an early 60s Corvette. <laughs> it's just absolutely mind boggling. Even the Jeep, you know, 500 and some dollars for a Jeep. Today, a Jeep like that, would cost you probably in the neighborhood of twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. So you know, just amazing. But once again, I want to thank all of you for watching. Um, as I said, I enjoy doing these. And until next week, this is your local historian Steve Rossio with the Portage Herald Headliner News. Have a good day.